friends i am krishna kanjani from lj institute of engineering and technology welcome to the online lecture series on kinematics and theory of machine in this session we will learn about gear in today's session we will learn law of gearing and this law of gearing is nothing but a simple condition for constant velocity ratio of gear okay now as we are aware that to transmit power from one shaft to another shaft we are using gear now the gear mechanism is very essential and very useful nowadays to transmit power in various systems now the main advantage of gear system is that that it is transmitting exact velocity ratio that is from input to the output shaft now to do so there is certain condition that must be satisfied while designing that gear and that condition is derived in this uh, formula that is law of gearing let's consider uh, let's uh, start that how it uh, is derived so let's uh, sketch or consider one gear that is gear a which is having gear tooth with respect to its center point o1 now this gear a is meshing with another gear which is gear b which is rotating about its center o2 so we can say o1 and o2 are two centers of gear a and gear b now this gear are meshing at point okay so let's consider this point as point q this contact point as point q now this q point can be termed on gear 1 as well as on gear 2 because while we are considering rotation of gear 1 with respect to angular velocity omega 1 that time we can consider point q on gear 1 while if we are rotating due to this omega 1 rotation gear 2 is rotating at angular velocity omega 2 so at that time we can consider point q on o2 okay so point q is a common contact point now with respect to this point q we can sketch two lines common tangent and common normal let's consider first one that is common tangent which will be passing in such a manner that it is making a common tangent between them over here in this sketch you can refer like this line which is joining this tt point okay now in a similar way we can sketch common normal which is perpendicular with this surface and the same time this common normal point if we consider as line mn okay now we can sketch as it is a common normal it is perpendicular to this q point okay now in a similar way we can consider that if we sketch perpendicular from this o1 on this common and it is giving certain uh, certain point on this common normal which is again termed as point m okay so on this common normal line we are projecting two perpendicular lines which are making 90 degree at this common normal point so here it is point m and similar way we can sketch one perpendicular line to this common normal which is intersecting at point n this angle will be 90 degree okay so now with the help of this diagram now we can consider this as a close triangles okay so if we consider now if we join point q with point o1 so this is your triangle one and similar way if you connect this o2 and q that will be your triangle number 2 now as o1 and o2 are two centers of two gears then if we join this o1 and o2 then this o1 and o2 line will give you point p which is a common contact point okay in this diagram you can refer even all over here that if initially what we have done we have sketch center o1 and o2 and with respect to this o1 and o2 one profile at q point and another profile at q point with respect to this q point we have sketch point m and point n in a similar way point o2 and point o1 now gear 1 is rotating with omega 1 and gear 2 is rotating with omega 2 okay now at this time 
we have just made one arrangement that we have two triangles triangle o2 p n in the similar way triangle o1 p m okay now while transmitting uh, power we are aware that the velocity which will be always perpendicular to this point okay if you consider point q over here so if you want to find out linear velocity then linear velocity of point q with respect to this o1 line will be always perpendicular to this let's consider that is velocity v1 of point q on a similar way we can sketch velocity of 2 uh, q point with respect to gear 2 which is termed as velocity 2 and will be again perpendicular to this o2 q line and it will be in a angle somewhere like this which is your v2 so now we have two velocities v1 that is linear velocity of gear 1 and v2 that is linear velocity of gear 2 okay now while transmitting power we are aware that this linear velocity has component on this common normal which is termed as a linear velocity v if we consider this linear velocity of v then we are aware that while meshing this point q has to travel in such a way that it has the common velocity v which is same so for example we can say that a component of v1 along this velocity line and component of v2 along this velocity line must be same then and then they will transmit uh, power with the same velocity okay so over here we have to identify the component of v1 with respect to v let's consider the component of v1 with respect to is making an angle alpha over here okay so over here we can sketch like the angle between them is let's consider angle between them is alpha v1 and v with respect to them my angle is alpha while v2 and v is making angle beta this one is your angle alpha and this one is your angle beta so over here we have to identify component of these two and it must be same okay so let's uh, derive the equation so over here we have to identify that v1 cos alpha and v2 cos beta must be same that the velocity component of v1 along this common normal line and component of v2 again along with this common normal line must be same okay so we have equation v1 cos alpha is equal to v2 cos beta okay now from this let's first identify uh, the general equation that the linear velocity v is equal to radius into omega v is equal to r omega this is a basic equation that you have learned in your past physics subject okay so over here we can say that for v1 we can say r1 omega 1 and for v2 it is r2 omega 2 now for r1 here over r1 is equal to o1 into o1 to distance q o1 q is radius for uh, gear 1 and o2 q is radius for gear 2 so we can say that omega 1 v is equal to r omega so over here omega 1 into o1 q cos alpha is equal to omega 2 into o2 q cos beta okay now second term that is cos alpha and cos beta now derive the equation and terms for q1 and q2 uh, cos alpha and cos beta so over here for cos alpha we can say that for cos alpha component here the alpha component is with v1 okay now the same angle if you consider this line this line is perpendicular with this one and similar way this line is let's consider and this second line is perpendicular to this one so intermediate angle alpha will be same in both the cases so over here alpha we can term over here and similar way beta because for this arrangement also this perpendicular line which is matching with this velocity v2 so over here the angle beta will be same in both the cases so beta 
will be transferred to this position okay so now we have to derive equation of cos alpha so let's sketch this arrangement once again for only this triangle okay so now for triangle this okay so over here if you want to identify cos alpha component so cos alpha is equal to adjacent uh, side upon hypotenuse okay so adjacent side that is equal to o1m and hypotenuse that is equal to o1q so o1m upon o1q in a similar way adjacent side over here will be o2n upon hypotenuse that is o2q so we can say o1m upon o1q now this term can be cancel out from both the sides so we can derive that omega 1 o into o1 m is equal to omega 2 into o2 n okay so now from this equation we have to derive that the uh, angular velocity ratio omega 1 upon omega 2 so it can be omega 1 upon omega 2 can be written as o2 n upon o1 n okay now in this case let's derive it for term o2n and o1m now o2n is the distance which is sketched with red line and over here it is o1m okay now for this triangle let's consider for triangle p for this triangle okay now for this triangle we have a basic idea this that these common ten common normals are parallel to each other okay and this line is passing between them so we can say that these two triangles are of equilateral uh, form so we can say o2n upon o1n o2n upon o1m is equal to this intermediate line we can derive this equation in such a way that o2n upon o1m is equal to we can say o2p because p is their common contact point so is equal to o2p upon o1p and this is the basic concept can be derived with geometrical equations okay so now in overall term we can say omega 1 upon omega 2 is equal to o2n upon o1m or is equal to o2p upon o1p so now with respect to these o1 and o2 centers this p point must remain at certain position that the ratio must be same and this ratio is defining our omega 1 upon omega 2 ratio okay so in this way we can say that for law of gearing the equation that is very essential omega 1 upon omega 2 can be achieved and can be satisfied if the distance o2 p upon o1 p remains constant and for that position the p point is defined in such a way that common normal and common tangent must pass from this point p and this is the basic condition of law of gearing okay so this condition is very useful for designing a gear how it works so over here in this diagram you can refer that while meshing of two gear that is gear 1 and gear 2 the common tangent point this each point is always passing from its common tangent and common normal if you sketch common normal over here and common tangent over here then you will always refer that it is always passing from this point clear okay so this is the basic condition so if you want to design profile of gear then in that case you have to first if you are choosing arbitrarily any shape of gear 1 then the shape of gear 2 must be designed in such a way that its contact point Q will be transferring your point P in such a manner that this P point remains constant for and it is uh, and its common normal and common tangent must pass from this pitch point okay and if you are designing any gear with respect to its arbitrary first gear then that uh, second gear is known as a conjugate gear okay so you uh, in this way you can uh, uh, design the profile of gear tooth in any shape but uh, conjugate gear the uh, design of this conjugate gear is very difficult so in identical condition mainly two types of threads are used 
मेनली टू टाइप्स ऑफ थ्रेड्स और थ्रेड फॉर्म्स आर यूज टू अचीव प्रॉपर लॉ ऑफ गियरिंग ओके एंड दीज टू टाइप ऑफ गियर फॉर्म वी विल स्टडी इन अवर नेक्स्ट सेशन ओके सो इन दिस सेशन लेट्स वाइंड अप दैट लॉ ऑफ गियरिंग स्टेटमेंट विच इज वेरी इशेंशियल फॉर डिजाइनिंग अ गियर एंड इट से दैट द कॉमन नॉर्मल एट द पॉइंट ऑफ कॉन्टेक्ट बिटवीन अ पेयर ऑफ टीथ मस्ट पास फ्रॉम द पीच पॉइंट ओके थैंक यू